This video is divided into two parts. This is part one, and part two is on my second channel right now. So click the link in the description box to go there when you're done with this video. Warning, it is not appropriate for children because it contains a lot of adult conversation, probably disturbing for adults too, but hey, <laughs> I am who I am. Anyways, enjoy the eating show and all of the crazy conversation we have today. Thanks. Curly fries at McDonald's? Get out of here. There's so many cute guys on Instagram. Oh gosh, I, oh, I don't want to say it while eating and what my parents are watching. It gets a little explicit. Shoot. A little less hate, need a little more love. Show up to the stage, everybody go nuts. See, I got what it takes, man. Let me blow up. See, I'm killing the game. Guess I gotta own up. Need a bad girl with a good heart. Got it together when I was falling apart. I put the pieces of music and now they're calling it art. It's fine to be yourself, man. Love who you are. It's like numbs a new feeling. Hurting yourself is not a method for healing. They have curry and rice here. That is so cool. And they also have curly fries. Wow, you can buy neck pillows here of a cheeseburger. Mm. Then I do. Ah. Ooh, oh. noodles are actually thinner. Spicy. Ah. Ah. Oh yeah. Yeah! Oh, oh my god. Amazing and spicy. I'm back home. Shoo-doo. I'm home. Hello. Hey little sloths, what's going on? It's Nikocado Avocado. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? As Wendy Williams says, welcome to my Asian McDonald's mukbang. Okay, so it's been a few days since I filmed my KFC video. If you haven't seen that, my Asian KFC video, make sure you check it out. I got a box to put the noodles in because I'm a fraud. I'm not a fraud. I wanted Asian noodles with my, trust me, this is different enough. I don't even need the noodles, but I just love noodles because I'm hashtag addicted. As you guys know, I've been recovering from the flu or who knows what. Oh, sulfur allergy, depression, divorce, the list goes on. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. So these are still so hot and warm and oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm going to show you everything I got. All right. So the first thing I have over here, curly fries at McDonald's. Get out of here. Oh my God, yes. I'm so excited, it makes me think of, well, what has curly fries, Jack in the Box? And then what we have in here? Oh yeah, I had to get this. This is something you don't find in the United States. Spicy crispy chicken. Okay, spicy chicken at McDonald's, do they have such a thing? I don't think so. I was about to get the spicy chicken burger, but I'm like, I've had that before. I'm in Asia, I gotta have something different. Speaking of something different. <gasps> okay, eh, how do I open this? Oh yeah, so I'm feeling so much better. The KFC literally cured me. And as, as you know from that video, it's not that the KFC cured me, it was the boost of calories that I needed because my body was just too, it was in starvation mode. <gasps> wow, what is this? So this is curry, some kind of fish curry. They, you could choose your protein. It was either pork, fish, chicken, or beef. And I eat chicken all the time and I eat beef all the time. I eat meat, oh, oh, oh. no I don't. <laughs> I just, I want some fish, I want some seafood, so. Ooh, that's most nice, and it has rice. This is so Asian. You know Asians love rice. And what's in here? Oh, I had to get the classic McDonald's burger to see, you know, is it similar or not to the United States? It's just the one, actually it was $2, but I think the ones in the United States are $2 now too, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so just a regular cheeseburger. Alrighty, are you guys eating with me? I hope so. Oh, and I got french fries. Now, the french fries are only good if you eat them right away. Mmm. Life is good. I'm so happy. Mmm. And it's a little hot and steamy because I turned off the air conditioning. Let me tell you the price. The total price was three, 300 baht, which is literally $10. This was all $10. Well, not the noodles, but the noodles were like, oh my God, I just have to have a bite before I put them into the fraud box. I'm gonna move you guys closer, don't you worry. How about I do that now? Let's get everything set up and let's begin the eating show. Are you ready? Let's go. Mm. Oh my god. There go my french fries. Bye. Ta-da! Look at this setup. Oh my god, I have to have some noodles. They're just calling my name. I don't know so much. Mmm. Mmm. 
let us begin. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> That's what I say. All right, so this is on like a little high rise, AKA my hard drive box. Okay, bye bye. We don't need you. Oh my God, I don't even know where to begin. Everything looks so good. And I have a drink today. Mmm, Coke, just like KFC, McDonald's only has one drink option. So I saw comments under my KFC video and a lot of you said, Nick, it might be just the specific location you're at, but. Mmm. You can't go wrong with curly fries, can you? Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my god, and oh, crispy chicken. Are you ready for it? Big piece of chicken. Here are the french fries that fell, they're still there. This is supposed to be spicy. Oh, that's spicy. Mmm, that's so good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I saw <clears throat> a lot of you told me that you agree with me. Yay! Finally, you agree with me. Most of the time you guys hate me, whatever. <laughs> when I proposed, what's on the wall? Oh, that's on my camera, it's grease, okay. <laughs> when you guys proposed to me, Nick, you don't have to, I used to film every day. That's how I think I grew my channel so big, because I filmed every day. By the way, I just hit 700,000 subscribers two days ago, and I'm so happy, thank you guys. I know, I'm like, my channel's so big. I'm like, that's kind of boasting. But I only bring it up because I just hit 700k, so I'm in that, I'm kind of like, wow, oh my god, really grateful, and what, really? How did that happen? I don't even know. But anyways, so I used to film every day, but it got to the point where I was getting really unhealthy, I was really fat. I still am kind of fat, but I, I need to find a balance. I've either been too skinny in my life or too overweight in my life. Well, I've... Yes, I'm being pretty overweight. I need to have, find that happy medium. And so I've decided I'm just gonna film on my cheat days. Once or twice a week. That way, this is sustainable for me. That way I can stick to my diet and look forward to something. Because when you do a diet, when you're miserable, you have nothing to look forward to. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> Mmm. I mean, as you guys know, I lost a lot of my weight because I got sick. So it's not like I worked that hard. It kind of just happened. I told my shout out to my friend Nadia, a different Nadia, not the old Nadia, a, a new Nadia. She is so pretty. Oh my god. She's just gorgeous. Like, wow. No, 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 do you want to be my girlfriend? <laughs> and guess who gets blocked? Awkward. No, I'm joking. <laughs> she knows she's pretty. She doesn't need me to tell her that. Anyways, she was like, Nick, how do you look? You're looking so good. Like, the double chin's going away. The arms look more slim. Yeah, she was just like, you look good. She's like, I see a big difference in your, whatever. I said, thank you. I caught the flu. She's like, give me the flu, please. God, I need to get the flu. <laughs> Sorry for that loud noise. We gotta try this. We have to try this. So this here is fish. Some kind of fish. I don't know. I say curry, but it might, might not be curry. Mmm. 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 That is probably not even real fish. That's why I'm saying this is a cheat day. I'm eating a lot of seafood, you guys, on my new diet. I still get comments all the time, Nick, will you go vegan? Nick, I'm like, do you not listen to anything I say? <laughs> why would I go vegan when it brought about so much conflict for me? And uh, uh, like, 
People are just waiting for me to be like, surprise, I'm just gonna be vegan now. It was all a joke. They're just waiting for me. It's like, I don't know. Let's try a classic cheeseburger. So what do you guys want to talk about today? Hmm. It's okay. I was really debating about getting the bit. <gasps> I should have showed on the camera. I should have shown you guys. So you know they have the Big Mac in the States? Here they have a double Big Mac. It's one, two, three, four, five, six patties. Now you guys know. What you get at fast food restaurants never turns out to be what it shows on the illustrations, does it? No. Mmm. 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 -hmm. And yes, that was on the table. But I cleaned the table before I started. Let's get some hot sauce. Um, so it may have not been that big and that impressive, but I should have. But I said, Nick, I, I told myself, I was like, Nick, you have three packs of spicy noodles at home waiting for you. Mmm. You know. What's up there? Oh, it's over there, but I'm too lazy to go get it. So I'll just show you this. It's blue. It's technically the cold spicy noodle. So you're supposed to run cold water over there, put it in the fridge or the freezer, you know, make it nice and cold. It tastes exactly the same as the original spicy noodle. <clears throat> Maybe a little less spicy, like a small bit less spicy. Mmm. I like it. The noodles are, are thinner and smaller. This chicken, though. Wait, does McDonald's have spicy chicken for you guys? Mmm. 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 Oh. We had the friend the fallen French fries back here. They could stay fallen. I don't really like. Mmm. They're good today. Mmm. Okay. So I'm finally feeling better. I'm not coughing anymore. My nose is cle uh, clear. It would be funny if I was like, my nose is clear. And I went, <laughs> <laughs> irony. No, seriously, I'm feeling so much better. The boost of calories. You guys, under eating is a very dangerous thing. That's what I'm saying. You have to find a balance. You shouldn't do mukbangs every day. But you shouldn't starve either. Hmm. Mm. Oh yes, the chili sauce. McDonald's fried chicken hot sauce. Oh, it's for fried chicken? I can't open that one for some reason. So, you guys, I'm just, I want everyone, it's so weird. So, it's almost two months. Next week, at the end of next week, it'll be two months since Orlin and I split up. And... I just want to like, I don't know, I just want to like get with someone. There's so many cute guys on Instagram. Oh, it's like clear. So many cute, oh. And someone said, Nick, you just need to get with a girl this time. Because you guys know I'm bisexual. But I'm more into guys than girls by a lot of it. We're talking like 80%. I'm attracted to males, 20% females. But it's strange because with Orlin, I always brought up girls a lot, and oh my god, I should be talking about this while I'm eating. It, it, it gets a little explicit. Shoot. Ugh, I just want to express myself, and then I'm like, well, the kids are watching. Mm. My parents are watching. Hmm. You get demonetized. YouTube's watching. 
but then I just feel censored. Ugh. Hmm. Okay, I'll tell you. Shh, it's a secret, but I'll tell you right now. Shh. Hmm. I should say this during the mukbang. Oh my god. Am I blushing? Mmm. <laughs> okay. I don't want to say this while eating. I don't want to gross you guys out. But then again, you talk about whatever you want when you're eating. When you're with a real friend. Not just that cordial, orderly... Formal dinner with your boss. I ain't your boss, bitch. <laughs> I'm not your manager. I'm not that friend that you haven't seen for two years and you're catching up and you put on that a nicer shirt than usual. No! I'm Nick. I'm your boo. I'm your boo. You see me every day. <clears throat> Alright, so let me just be real. I really... Oh, gosh. I, oh, I don't want to say it while eating and while my parents are watching. Huh. Okay, so, <laughs> no. Okay, oh my god, I shouldn't even say this. Oh my god. <laughs> Nick's sponsors all pull out. You guys, I haven't had a sponsorship for like two months. I usually get them about a once a month. That's pretty nice, but I haven't had them for a while. Hmm. Actually, there was one that some, uh, a game on app, they said, can you please shout us out, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay. Excuse me, then Orlin broke up with me. I got really sad. I made my videos. So never heard from them again. <sighs> but you pick in your choose. Do I want to be G-rated for the sake of a sponsorship maybe coming my way? Because you guys know, that's how YouTubers make their money. We make them through our YouTube videos. We have advertisements. Excuse me, but more money comes from sponsorships if you get them. Well, it also depends on the size of your channel. If you have 5 million... 5 million subscribers, you're gonna get paid, you know, five, you're gonna get paid thousands of dollars. Whereas, you know, if you're just starting out, well, first of all, if you're just starting out, you're not gonna get it. It's just, I'm like at the lower, maybe middle tier, not even, uh, somewhere. I'm like middle class, lower middle class. Um, you know, with like Liza Koji and David Dobrik and all these people that, you know. So, I have to make a decision. Do I be more G-rated? Or a possibility, or I just be myself because I shouldn't depend on a maybe. I should depend on what's real. This is real. Okay, let me just tell you, I want pussy. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> I've become more and more and more and more curious about the pussy. Um, I've never seen one. Well, okay, no, I take that back. When I was in fifth or sixth grade, my friend showed me hers. I was like, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. You know what kids do, and behind the bushes. <laughs> but I never, in sixth grade, I, did, I didn't really know what, why I wanted to even see it. I just, it just, Instinct. That's it's human instinct. Sex is a human human instinct. That's why you can't just decide if you're gay or straight. You just are how you are. So this past year, mm, I have been thinking about pussy more and more. Girls have like turned me on more and more. And don't even say in the, the comments, oh, Orlin made Nick straight. No, he didn't. This has nothing to do with him. It's just, it's a part of you. And sometimes it comes to show more than, you know, it's a, it blossoms later in life and goes back later in life. I don't, I just want to experience having sex with a woman. And, you know, I'm not gonna, oh gosh, my parents, they don't watch my channel anyways. I look at porn like most people on this planet. Well, okay, let's take that back. Most horny men, most gay guys look at porn. There you go, that's easier than <laughs> saying all people. Um, 
Always have. I mean, and I was always open about with Orlin, like, because <clears throat> sometimes, like, when you're in a mood for that and your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife isn't, it's very healthy just to say, I'm going to go masturbate, then force them or go cheat on them. Porn, I think, is a good, I don't know, I think it's it's just normal to masturbate. I mean, it's so hard talking about this. And also, I'm eating. So anyways, I've been, if you look at my history, it used to always be just like, guys. And then, you know, a year, two years into with Orly, it was more like, like, 80% guys, sometimes girls. And then the past six months has been like, half of the time, 50% of the time. I look at girls more than guys. And a psychic reached it out to me. Her name's Kiki. These small little bones, I'm so sorry, ew. Now, Kiki predicted a few things for me that actually came true. Um, I'm not gonna get into it because one of them's kind of like still in the works, so I'm not allowed to even talk about it. Another one she said in, um, this was back in the summertime of last year, she said something about February and March is going to be a good time for you. It's going to be scary and different, but it's going to be a good time for you. And that was like many, that was before I found out I got deported. I got deported, I ended up getting deported at the end of February going into March. My YouTube was at the highest it had ever been in March. I think it was like 15 million people watched my channel that month. And I was, Ill. she said something about it being like hard but good. <laughs> um, difficult but exciting, there you go. <clears throat> and yeah, it was very sad to, to leave my house, leave my family, leave my stuff. But I was also very happy to be back in America. I was so happy to be with my parents. I was happy to be driving a car. Like, it just felt good. And that helped. So anyways, she said, I see you with a woman. I see a woman coming into your life. And it's going to be very influential and very, um, she's going to influence you in many ways. And I'm waiting for this woman, huh? <laughs> oh, my word, sir. You know that Judge Judy meme that you see on Twitter? I love, oh, can we talk about Judge Judy? I love Judge Judy. I love her. Maybe I need Judge Judy's pussy. No, I feel like there's too many like rules involved. You have to sign a waiver and then, I don't know, it, it, people like that. Like I really like Judge Judy cause she's strict and stern and she's h harsh, but, but she's honest and she's by the books. That's not someone you want to have sex with. <laughs> oh my God. Nope, it's not. I really love. When I was sick, when I had the flu, I was watching Judge Judy every single day. Ooh, I'm making a mess. Every single day, every single day, at least two hours a day. Thank God for YouTube. They're all there. <laughs> uh, well, not all of them, but many. Well, she's been on the TV for decades, so there's thousands of episodes. Um, love her. Anyways, who's this woman that's going to come into my life? Am I going to get a girlfriend? I haven't had a girlfriend since high school. And will the girlfriend be okay if I still like boys? Like, does that weird, like, Orlin told me <clears throat> a few times. It's like, one of the things I, I'm very bothered by you is that you still, that you like girls that you look at girls a lot, that kind of freaks me out. And I don't blame him. 
Like, that's, that's a little weird. Girls, put yourself in his shoes. You're with your guy. You're with your boo. Your boo's real hot. You really like your boo. And every once in a while, you catch your boo jerking off to b other boos getting up the butt. How does that make you feel? <laughs> um, should I be here? <laughs> should I be in this relationship? It might make you feel a little I interesting. Now, some girls might prefer that than other girls. It's like... As long as the only girl he looks at is me, that's okay. But you know that's not real. Like, you can't just be attracted to one person in your life. Oh. I like this fake fish. Mmm. I don't know how fake it is. You know McDonald's is full of junk. A lot of it is soy filler. Did you know that? That's why they always say the quality of your food is very important. Grass fed beef, that's fed a proper diet, it's going to be more nutritious for you than factory raised beef that doesn't have as, as much food. You, or they eat corn, which you're not supposed to. Right? Isn't it corn? Yeah. So, we're not going to talk about that right now, but I'm just saying. It tastes good. Mmm. Oh, it's a treat. Anyways. Yeah. I kind of want a girlfriend. Or just to experience being with a girl. I don't know why. I can't explain why. And why it's been growing on me more and more and more this whole year. This desire. This curiosity. This. It's like an instinct. I also say to myself, hmm, what girl is going to be attracted to me? I mean, but I do like guys too. I just want everyone. <laughs> Mm. I was watching, what's his name? Steven Crowder on YouTube. He's like a commentary, mostly about political stuff type of guy. Conservative, Republican. And I like to watch him because I don't identify as conservative or Republican. I also don't identify as liberal or Democrat anymore like I used to. I'm very independent, moderate. There's things about both sides. <clears throat> We're not going to talk about politics in this video, don't you worry. But I'm definitely not, like, gung-ho about my party, my party. I'm not that way anymore. I used to be in, like, high school. I was in the Young Democrats and stuff. Um, just, and my biggest things were, like, gay rights. Back when I was in high school, people were still getting in trouble for being in gay relationships. Like, it's a very, it's a very new thing. Ten years ago, I wouldn't even have been allowed to get married. So... The only party that was really pushing those rights was the Democratic Party, so that was my priority in terms of politics. Those rights to be treated as as everyone else. Hmm. Anyways, I like to watch. Anyways, I like to watch this commentary commentator guy because he says things I don't agree with, and I think it's very important. Now, sometimes I do agree, but I'm just saying it's very important. To not just be in a ch echo chamber, you know what I mean? Where everyone's just solidifying what you already believe. You're always supposed to question it and push your boundaries. And it helps you, excuse me, better understand what you really do believe. If you surround yourself with people that are telling you you're great and praising you nonstop, you're in for a rude awakening once you stop hanging around those friends. So I always like things that are different. So anyways, I watched him. interview another, not another, <clears throat> a, because he's not gay, Steven Crowder, even though he's really sexy, oof, um, I wish he was, but <laughs> he is very respectful to gay people, I think, or I've watched a few of his videos where he said, being gay is not a choice, I'm one of the first people to say it in the Republican spectrum, whatever, 
I think you can't just decide one day, like I've tried to explain this video, what you're attracted to. I think sexuality is very complex. I feel like more people are bisexual than they don't realize. And that's one thing I disagreed with him on. So I was interviewing this guy who happened to be conservative and gay, and he was actually Mexican, uh, son of Mexican immigrants. So it was just like, whoo, what? <laughs> um, and they both were like, yeah, people use bisexuality as just an excuse because they're horny or people like to pretend they're bi because they're too afraid to say they're gay. And this this bisexual guy who said he actually was bisexual was just like, yeah, everyone's saying they're bi because it's the cool thing to do. Do you agree with that? I mean, maybe since I'm not in school and I'm not surrounded by teenager, well, I'm not a teenager, but young adults all the time. I don't, I never sensed that at all. I feel like... People are still just afraid to say they're bisexual as they are gay. People are pretending to be bi? I've never heard of such a thing. I've heard people say, oh, people are bi just because they're horny. Or, you know, you go to a party in college and you're drunk and, you know, you end up making out with a girl. And you're like, oops, I have a boyfriend, but I'm just going to kiss you because I'm drunk. I mean, that's different than actually having internal feelings and attraction when you're drunk your judgment's so thrown off you would fuck a monkey if you could you know what i mean that's 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 different but when you're sober that's that's what i'm trying to get at people are pretending to be bisexual i've never heard of that and for them they were sitting sitting down together at a table during this interview and they're both saying very confidently oh yes people are pretending to be bi it's so disgraceful blah blah i'm like really how do you, how would you even know that first of all you can't read people's minds. Because I believe that it's the opposite. I think more people are actually bisexual than they realize. Not that they're pretending, it's just they don't realize. Life is like a bell curve, right? You have your polar, it's like the political party. It's like everything and everything. It's like, it goes like this, and then it pins down on the sides. The sides would be black and white. 100% Republican, conservative, hard left, right wing. 100% Democratic, 100% hard left wing. Socialism, this one's more like blah, blah, blah. That's the minority, to be so pure black and white. Most people are mixed. Most people separate from the pins. The pins, they go inwards, and it's a jimble jumble. Humans are mixed. I'm half black, I'm 50% Irish, I'm 20% Native American, I'm 15% Ara uh, Arabic, I'm like a little bit of Hindu. Oh, yeah, um, I'm Filipino mixed with English and 10% Canadian and oh, I also have some South American genes. Like, we are so mixed as people. I feel like our beliefs are so mixed. And I think sexuality is not all of a sudden different from that. I feel like most people, are, are like what I was explaining. It's like, I'm mostly gay, I'm 80%, but there's still a little part of me that finds appeal in women. I don't know. I don't think that's so hard to believe, considering the fact that when you look at jails, all of a sudden half those people in same-sex jails start doing stuff together because you can still tap into that little piece of you that'd be like, well, I'm in an all-male jail, a prison I'm supposed to be here for. 20 years, you know, I could just jerk off in the corner or I could like experience it with another human being If they were in the black and white pins a hundred percent black and white of the spectrum gung-ho Left wing gung-ho right wing. They wouldn't get an erection with the same sex. They just wouldn't But many people come out of prisons and jails saying with stories saying I did experience this Many, 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 many. There's been some big studies on that too. Same with animals, it's the same thing. Like Mr. Noodle and Roberto are both males. They're not even the same species. They're both parrots, but they're different types of, they can't even speak their, they've made up their own language just to communicate each other. Cause they figure this is our life now. Mr. Noodle's over here on the side of the branch. Mr. Roberto's over here at the side of the branch. And they look at each other like, bitch, you're all I got now. We got, we got Nikocado Avocado giving me ramen noodles during the mukbangs, and the rest of the time we're here in this cage, eating, eating seeds and pellets and looking at Miss Kitty, you know, walking around. Like, you're all I got. 
if they were out and about, they would have never been friends. Now life has had, life puts them in a circumstance where I'm with you now. We're both males and we have seen them on top of each other. At nighttime, they curl up and they cuddle. We have seen them having bird sex. We have seen Roberto show signs of affection by gargling his food in his mouth uh, 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 and trying to feed his gargled, already digested food, spitting it up into Mr. Noodle's beak to share the food. That is a sign of love in the bird world. Anyways, I don't know why I'm talking about this. Oh yeah, because I'm bisexual. <laughs> And they just sat there so defiantly saying, everyone's making up to be bi to be cool. I'm like, how do you even know that, first of all? And second of all, why do you believe that? What evidence is there to suggest that? If you look at the Greek and Roman times, it was very, very normal for men to interact with other boys. They would have their saunas, the bathrooms, they all sit around and jack off, or they would have a boy that they used to play with, but they had wives and children back home. That was socially accepted in that society. Were they all just acting? I don't know, I mean. I believe sexuality is extremely complex and it's, it's just impossible to be black and white. Um, one way and no one feels comfortable admitting it because we don't live in Julius Caesar times where you could go to the bathhouse and get it on and not have to think twice was someone going to judge me the Bible said this or if you're Muslim the Quran says you know this 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 like that wasn't around then and we're still people that's why I get so upset when people say oh homosexuality is a choice and I've seen so many people say that it's in the water. Our fluoride in the water is making people more gay. It's like, well, what, 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 how do you explain Mozart, uh, Ch Tchaikovsky being gay? How do you explain Brahms being bisexual? How do you explain Leonardo da Vinci? How do you explain Michelangelo, the, one of the greatest artists in the history of humanity, being gay? He wasn't drinking no fluoride water. How do you explain what I just talked about? The, the fluid sexual interactions among people back in the 10th century or whatever, you know, what I, like, how do you explain Mr. B Roberto and Noodle? They don't drink fluoride water. Or if you look at the fucking Jungle Book, go on BBC and watch the, the elephants interact. Dolphins, they're not drinking fluoride water. And there's gay dolphins, it just... I also, I, maybe I'm biased because I am in the LGBT community, but I don't understand why it's even such a big deal. Why is it such a big deal to, pe to other people? What someone else does with their lives in terms of love or feeling good or expressing their affection to someone, why does that affect you so much? Nine, nine, ninety percent of the time it comes down to religion, but the first and basic concept of religion is to respect other people and treat them well. Um, that's a whole other topic, religions being just lots of contradictions, and it's all about interpretations, too. I didn't even try one of these these things. This meal is bomb. This is great. Hmm. I don't like it as much as this one, the spicy one. I like spicy things now. This is spicy. This is spicy. This fish stuff is spicy. I literally was opening my spicy chili. I just love spice now. Hmm. Speaking of prisons, prisons, jails, 
I made an Instagram story like a week ago talking about this, so if you already watched it, but only like 30, 40,000 people watch my Instagram. I mean, that's a lot of people, but this video might have two, two, 300,000 views, so most of you did not see it. Um, I have an Instagram, follow me on Instagram, but I made a live story in that moment. So when I was sick in bed, just trying to keep myself entertained on the computer, watching YouTube, watching Judge Judy, looking at pussy porn, you know. <laughs> Doing what you do when you're sick, lying around trying to keep yourself alive. Oh my God. Bye bye, all sponsorships. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. I made the decision that I would rather speak my truth than depend on a maybe. Can't depend on something that maybe will happen. Anyways, yes, that's what I did. And. <laughs> I got sucked into a big dark rabbit hole of prison fights, prison fights, jail fights of men, like single sex uh, male prisons. I don't know how that came up, but it did. And almost 45 minutes goes by and I'm still watching them and I'm freaking out. I, excuse me, don't like violence. I have never ever hit someone Maybe when I was a kid, I threw a block at someone's head or, you know, I, but in terms of like a fist fight, punching in the face, pulling hair, slapping, kicking, swinging, pushing you up against a car, smashing your head into like a actual big bar fight type of thing. I have never experienced. I have never hurt someone physically. One time Orlin hit me and I hit him back, but again, it was not like a like a thing I'm watching on prison fights when it's like 10 minutes of swinging and punching and running over here and then they fight. It was more like, stop it. And he slaps me and then I slap him and then we cry and then we hug and we kiss and we make up like that, you know, but not actual fight. I could never live through that. It was so scary. So I was watching these prison fights and I said, you know, I would rather die than be in prison and experience that. Like I said, being, being gay, um, I would be a target maybe because I'm openly gay. Well, like I said, a lot of those guys might uh, secretly start doing stuff on the sides, depending depending on how long their sentence is. But regardless, I would be very open about I mean, I'm openly gay. You can tell by my mannerisms. A lot of these guys are tough. And they have piercings and tattoos. I'm not saying if you have piercings and tattoos that you're violent. I'm just saying it makes it all more scary to me because a lot of the tattoos represent violence, meaning uh, uh, gangs, a thug. Thugs are engaged in violence a lot. It's just very scary stuff. Um... And the way they speak is very different. Usually, I can't I can't speak for everyone in a jail. You can have white collar crimes too when you go to jail, but but a lot of the times people that end up in jails and prisons come from a rough upbringing. That's why they think doing things unlawfully is okay because their upbringing was different. You know, they grew up on the streets. They grew up in really bad neighborhoods. Their family was into drugs or prostitution, or they didn't have a father figure, a mother figure. They were. They went to very bad schools where fighting was like school fights. Oh, don't even get me started. Those scare me so much. So if that's how you're raised and that's the imprint on your brain, then you're more likely to end up in jail because acting out and doing unlawful things was your surroundings growing up. So, I mean, I feel bad for a lot of people in jail. It's like if you take most of those people and stick them in different environments when they were children, half of them would not be there, I guarantee. That's why it's so important to really care about children. Anyways, it was so scary watching, oh my God, I almost had tears in my eyes. I was just like, this violence, I would rather take 15 Advils, if I, if I had a, a life sentence or like 25 years or even 10 years, well, I don't know about 10, maybe even that. If I knew that I was going to the world's most dangerous prison full of very dangerous people, full of fighting and this and that, I would, wow, it's getting bright. I would, um, I'll have to change the battery. I would kill myself. I would take 15 Advils, bloop, and just, I'd rather die than live through that. And I did a poll on Twitter. I talked about it on my, I talked Twitter, my Instagram story, and I said, I would rather die. How many guys agree after I had talked about the prison fights? It was like 90% we disagree. 10% of people said, yeah, we would die too. We would rather kill ourselves than live in jail. But all the rest of the people said, no, we would rather live. And I was like, what? People want to live through that, there has to be a mistake. Oh my God. So what I did was, I'm gonna tell you once I changed the battery. So I was very shocked by the, the results. I just realized there's food on my face this whole time. I'm so sorry. 
I was shocked. So I said, wait, maybe I should show these YouTube videos I had been watching to let people see why I came to my conclusion and then take another poll. So I deleted that poll saying I would rather kill myself. How many guys would agree? Everyone said, you're stupid, you're whatever. <laughs> so I deleted it. And then on my Instagram show story, I showed the YouTube videos of the guys attacking each other, innocent people in the corner just eating. All of a sudden, bop in the head, they get beat up. They're just bloody, bloody, broken nose, stomping on their face with their feet. Just so violent. And they were just sitting there. Now, obviously, sometimes you have to instigate. Like, I always say, it takes two people to tango. When there's an argument, two people made mistakes, always. It's never 100%, just like that black and white spectrum we were talking about with sexuality and politics and everything else. But nature, if you look at nature, nothing's black and white. That's why I think most people are bisexual, but whatever. Um, you probably did something to make them mad in the first place. Whether it was mostly their fault, it doesn't matter, you still engage somewhat. If you're completely minding your business, you're less likely to get bopped in the face uh, by other guys at the prison because you're not instigating them. You're not talking, you're not arguing over your, this girl's my girl, blah, 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 you know? Same with school fights. If you see school fights, both of them are doing something to instigate it. So anyways, but still, there can be innocent people like myself eating my, my sandwich, being all gay, and all of a sudden, you're, you're, a, you're a F word, fag, <clears throat> punch me. So then I showed those on my Instagram story and then I did an, another poll saying, press yes if you would kill yourself if, so you don't have to live through this. Press no if you would still choose to live through this for the rest of your life. Which one would you do? Take 100 Advils and kill yourself, or would you rather live? And then all of a sudden, it went from 90% to 40%. It was basic, basically 50-50. And I said, aha, I had to show you what made me come to that conclusion for you to see what I saw. And more people said, and more people were like, oh yeah, I would never live through that. But I still said to those 50-50% 50, 50 of the people that wanted to live through that, a lot of them were girls. I said, oh my God. You guys are tough. I wouldn't know how to defend myself. Hmm. I'm getting full. This is delicious though. Mm. Mm. That's all done. It got hot in here really quickly. Hmm. Oh yeah. It's like a plastic thing in there. So what else is going on in my life? Well, I was actually really happy to see the feedback under my KFC, Asian KFC video. I thought, I could have sworn that there would be drama. Nick, how dare you talk so me, me, Nick? If you don't want to call this drama, don't just speak about it. But like I said, sometimes you're either defending yourself or you're instigating something. The thing about her though, I didn't say, I, you know, cause I was editing that video, putting it all together. It was two hours long, which took me five, six hours just to put together. Um, I was saying, oh, I should have gone into more detail. People didn't realize that she had made a video about me first. Now she didn't put my name in the title and she didn't call me out by name. But it was 100% obvious that she was talking about me. She showed her emails of her emailing over a year ago to YouTube saying, this guy's causing trouble. This guy's spreading disinformation. This guy's misinforming his viewers. You should be aware of it. Like tattletailing on me to her, man her manager on YouTube. And you say, well, you don't know if that was you. It's like, yes, I do. She said, he, at that time a year ago, I was the only male mukbang channel. And then she said, he has this many subscribers, or he has like double the subs as me. At the time, I was the only male subscriber with more subs than her. Um, it was obvious. And then she showed my name and she scribbled it out, but it started an N and ended at O. What other mu male mukbang channels start with the letter N on YouTube? There is one other male mukbang channel. Like, most, it's mostly girls. But, so, the fact that she was being so passive aggressive about it was really annoying. I don't sit here and say I don't like drama. I say I don't like when people start stuff with me. But, uh, 
Chris Crocker made a very interesting post on his Twitter recently, and I 100% agree with it. And it said, the people that complain about drama because you're questioning what they're saying or doing, when you're asking them for a discussion based on what they're saying or doing, if they turn around and say, well, you're starting drama because they can't communicate like an adult and say, because there's always gonna be problems in life. We're never all gonna hold hands. That's how humans are. If you would rather say, don't talk about me because you're starting drama or you're, you're dramatic and you're trying to cause drama because you're confronting me, that means you aren't even able to have a conversation. You're the one making drama because you can't speak. If she had emailed me privately and said, Nick, what's going on about your channel? Who did you contact? It would have been a different story. If she would have actually just said my name in her video and said, you know, I'm concerned about Nick Akato Avocado's channels getting demonetized because my videos aren't demonetized. Therefore, I'm wondering why it's different. But she didn't do that. She said, this person who I'm not gonna say his name, even, but she made it so obvious, and acting like she was trying to not cause drama actually created the drama. You understand? Do you, do you get it? So anyways, a lot of you guys didn't realize she had made this video about me a long time ago. Showing the emails, to, it was so funny because the manager, so she said, this guy's saying his mukbangs are being demonetized. Tell me what's going on. And her manager, the first response, you can see it in the emails was, I don't know. Please refer to the manual. The response was, I don't know. And then she emailed again saying, oh, well, he's he made another video saying that, you know, it's I'm afraid it's misinformation, what's going on? And then she said, again, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. I only know what your channel, the standing of your channel. Is it good? Is it okay? Do you have a strike? I'm looking at your channel. Your channel's fine. I cannot say or confirm or deny what's going on. That's That was the response of the, the manager. And then she concluded based on that, Nikocado lied. Nikocado's spreading information. He's causing drama. And she made that whole video without even saying my name, which actually caused more drama because you're trying to be sneaky. You know, Orlin, Orlin is a certified yoga teacher. He was involved with yoga for a long time. And Orlin told me the people, that's how, that's where I learned actually. I saw with my own eyes because we experienced a lot as a couple traveling and communicating with other people and having problems arise and seeing how they act. And he always said, Nick, the yoga community is so fake. They will, they will make their Instagram post like this on a rock saying the world is peace, your positive energy. And once that photo's done in real life, they're passive aggressive, they're cranky, they're, mi they're misleading people, they're manipulating people. Um, and I saw it with my own eyes all the time. And it always came from the people that try to paint themselves in such a drastic different way. It, can't, it, it, it didn't come from the people that would just be like, it is what it is, let's talk about life. Or there's a problem, okay, let's talk about the problem. It always came from the people that said, there's a problem, I'm not gonna talk about it. If you talk about it, you're causing drama, namaste. It always came from those people. So I didn't explain that in that video. She had, there was a past where she tried, and I was just so disturbed by that. And it's so funny, because two years ago, back when I was just starting my YouTube channel, well, there's also a lot with her. Anyways, we I had reached out to her like two years ago, a year and a half ago, probably. Um, it was before Orla and I got married, which was a year and a half ago. So it was about a year and a half ago, if not more. And I just was like, hey, I'm coming to, oh, that's when I went to Hard Attack Grill, which was in March. So it was one year and four or five months, a year and a half. And I was like, hey, I'm going to Hard Attack Grill. Well, I didn't say that, but I'm like, I'm going there to make some videos because she lives within hours from there. I think she lived in Arizona or something. And I said, would you like to collab? Let's meet up, let's hang out. Because we had been communicating on you now, like supporting each other. Um, where else, in the comment section. And then she got sick, she got a lung infection. And I checked up on her, I was like, hey, how are you feeling? How's your lungs doing? You know, maybe you should try this. Uh, you know, it was fine, it was cordial. We ended up not collaborating because she had a death in the family and then she got a lung infection or something. Yeah. And ever since then, she just showed her true colors. She showed her true colors. Man, I, do I dodged a bullet there. I always say to myself too, I remember telling Orlin, I was just like, 
this was like, if, if throughout the whole year, I was just saying, imagine if we had collaborated and made videos and then she started doing this shit to me. And he says, well, she probably started acting this way because she didn't make the video with you. She saw the videos you made with Candy that got flat 5 million views and probably said that could have been me. If you see a pattern, if you see other people having problems with a person, then you kind, of, you kind of have to step back and say, it may just be that person. Sometimes, not all the time. There's been many people that have had problems with me. But again, a lot of those people were vegan and um, a lot of those problems came about because I stopped being vegan. Like my old friend Nadia, the moment I said, hey Nadia, I told her privately, I'm, I'm really concerned about my health. My blood work is terrible. I don't feel right. I'm gonna start eating fish. How dare you? Where are your ethics? You're, you're, you're a pig, you're fat. Yeah, I came to your house. After I had um, opened up my house to her, fed her, gave her my bed, because I only had one bed, I slept on the floor to accommodate for her. I made her food, I was, you know, I gave her, you know, I helped, I helped get, give her some followers because, you know, like we had filmed lots of mukbangs together and I told her, you know, I was just nice, I was a good friend. She helped me get a bike, it was, it was a friendship. And all of a sudden, while well, you were fat, yeah, when I came to your house, when I came to your house, I thought how fat you were. You're so, where are your morals? You have no compassion. It's like, what are you talking about? Of course I have compassion. Just because I want to eat some fish doesn't change how I, how I treated you. And it was this whole big to-do because I didn't want to be vegan anymore. I didn't believe it. And she stopped being my friend. And I'm saying, in situations like that, the vegans are different. The vegans are different. And since I was involved with a lot of them, a lot of the problems I've had with vegans are because of the whole vegan thing. Um, where me as a person is determined on what I eat. Me as a person, whether I treat you well, whether, whether I'm honest, whether I stand up for you, whether we have a nice time as people, as human beings, is determined on whether we have the same philosophy or not. That's just, it's very common with vegans. They see it as black and white. You're a murderer or you have compassion. You can't have compassion if you eat meat. That's what it comes down to. And I think that's absurd because they're not being compassion to humans which are the priority because we're the same friggin species <sighs> like i don't know so i know i'm going off track so that's what happened <coughs> <coughs> she had different information from me do you know how many people work for youtube you guys like thousands you think they all know first of all that would be confidential the client conf like my manager can't go off and speak to other managers this is what i had a conversation with about my client like that first of all that they're not going to do i don't know what world she, world she lives in where she thinks that's just what happens um and also i don't know if the manager she has is even from the same people that i speak to you know my channel is three times the size as hers i've had four different managers as i've grown i don't know if they come from different departments it's not, they're not going to tell me. That's what the purpose of a manager is. It's confidential. It's not like you go to the doctor's office and say, hey, doctor, the woman that came in here five days before me, does she have diabetes or hypoglycemia? I, I want to know which one. Can you tell me? <laughs> like what? <sighs> and again, since we had been, since we had talked, you know, a couple years ago about, I was, she had my email. She knew exactly how to contact me. She could have asked what was going on and I would have gladly told her. And instead she tried to start drama. And she only did it around the time she stopped doing mukbang when her views went down. And I just, again, I've been a victim of people accusing me to, of doing things for views. But, but, it's very interesting that all of a sudden she's, she's trying to get me to react to her when her views go away. She didn't do it all that time when she was doing mukbangs. She had sent that email a year ago. She was eating cheesy ramen noodles and getting 200,000 views. She didn't talk about me then and there. She waited until, until all of a sudden she, her income went down. She waited until all of a sudden things were different. So it's just suspicious to me, you know, suspicious. You know, people accuse me of crying for views I mean, if you look at my videos before and after when I cried, 
The views are fine. I don't need to cry for views. First of all, I make barely any money from them. I don't do it for money. I don't do it for views. I do it to let you know, if I don't film a mukbang in real time for two weeks, here's why. I'm sad because I'm deported. I'm sad because the sloth sent me to the hospital. I'm sad because my, my husband left me. I'm sad because whatever. I'm allowed to do that. Um, and I haven't waited until like my channel came to a standstill. It's never been that way, thank God. But if it did come to that, if it did come to a standstill, I wouldn't start making up drama with other YouTubers passive aggressively too, which is even worse. Uh, so I just want to clarify that. Other than that, I'm really happy that you guys were, you know, supportive of me for sharing my views. I talked about Amber Lynn. I'm surprised I didn't get any heat for that. I mean, it was towards the end of the video, but people just love to hate her. I watched one of her new videos today and I said out, out loud in this room, on this bed, there's no one here to hear me. And I said out loud, I swear to God, if this girl was a stick figure, she, her comment section would not look like this. 90% of all this driven hate is because she's fat. That's the only reason people are, because if you close your ears and just listen to her speak, there's really nothing. She sounds like a normal vlogger. She sounds like a normal vlogger. Talking about her day, talking about her struggles, talking about her insecurities, talking about what makes her happy, just whatever. But because she's overweight and people think that since she started her channel saying I'm gonna lose weight and she hasn't lost weight, all of a sudden she's trolling and manipulating her view. It, do you know how hard it is to lose weight, especially when you're morbidly obese? It's gonna take a long time, it's gonna take therapy, it's gonna take pro professional help. And whether or not she's doing that yet is really no one's concern. But again, it's just, I said out loud, my God, why is she getting so much hate? I just don't understand. So I'm surprised I didn't get hate at, um, and for, for just saying that in my previous video of the KFC one. I'm surprised that people didn't turn around and say, Nick, how dare you? Because I've gotten that before. Wow, you support, you're associated with Amber Lynn? Wow, I'm unsubscribing. The girl who lied about losing weight, the girl that, you know, treated her ex poorly, it's like, I'm associated, I get that, I got that a lot, I'm associated with her. It's like, I've never met her. I enjoy her videos from time to time because I like listening to her chat while I'm doing something, it's just in the background. And all of a sudden I'm associated with her. I really like Britney Spears, I listen to her music. I know a little bit about her. Does that mean I'm associated with Britney Spears? Nick Akato is associated with Britney Spears. <laughs> like, wow, you stand up for Amber. It's like, oh my God. And P, the same thing happens to me. P, I've seen other people say, you know, I like Nick's videos, whatever, for whatever reason. And I see their comments and people saying, wow, how dare you like Nick Akato? He said this, he did, th he did this. And you also have to remember too, a lot of times you click on a video, you watch a couple minutes, you turn it off. And people are talking about things that happen 17 minutes down later, and you're not even gonna know what they're talking about. You also have to remember too, a lot of YouTubers such as myself and Amber and everyone else has hundreds of videos. Everyone's on a different page. When my dad asked me, Nick, how do you deal with haters and criticism? I said, I just have to tell myself everyone's on a different page. Some people just found me yesterday. Some people have been with me since I was vegan. Some people found me when I went to the hard attack grill with candy. Some people used to watch me, stopped and came back and they don't really know what happened in between. Some people have been watching me forever, but they only watch two minutes. They wanna see me eat the bite of food, and then they move on with their day. Some people don't like to watch me eat the food, and they just wanna hear what I have to say. Everyone is on a different page, and everyone has these strong opinions, and they think it's just so, they think it's valid, and they think it's across the board, and it's not. Oh my God. Hmm. Life is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> oh, God. Anyways, I think I'm done rambling. Anyways, I really need more water. It's getting hot in here because I turned off the air conditioner. That's one thing about Thailand. I, I want to live somewhere that's cold. I am sick of the tropics. I am sick of... I... Yesterday, so my, my friend Nadia that was saying, Nick, I need the flu too so I can lose some weight too. <laughs> she lives in New York City. And oops, this is about to die. She lives in New York City. And uh, I miss New York City. I miss 
the excitement. I miss the energy of New York City. I used to live there for a short period of time. I used to commute there for working when I was in, I was in college in Washington, D.C. I used to take the bus up and down from New York I, as a college student to do work in New York City. That's why I ended up dropping, well, I dropped out for lots of different reasons, but I was also getting job prospects up there and I just want, I just want to, let's do this, let's do this. I don't need this degree to perform violin. Most performers don't even, that's not even a requirement to play violin. It's based on your skill and your connection. So the whole degree thing, I didn't think was necessary, but anyways, I just, I miss New York City. And I know it's gonna sound really strange, but I like, daygasm. You know, there's orgasm, there's daydream, there's dream, and then there's daygasm. I will sit in the middle of the day and just go on Craigslist and look at apartments for rent. And I just envision my life. I'm like, okay, this one, oh, I love this one, Cobblestone Road. This is in Soho, this old brownstone, $5,000 $5, a month. Okay, let's pretend I have that money. Okay. <laughs> It's like my whole pay YouTube paycheck. All right, so let's just sit here. And I all of a sudden just daygasm. I just close my eyes and I imagine a new life. I reinvent myself. That's my cute little cubby apartment. I imagine experiencing the four seasons. I imagine experiencing snow falling at 11 p.m., softly falling onto the cobblestone of Soho, walking down the street, seeing the light from the lampposts reflect upon the snow, going down into the subway and feeling the rush of air from the subway's passing come up the tunnel as I'm walking down the steps. I imagine being bundled up in my coat and sipping hot chocolate and going on the train and having it go above the bridge at nighttime, 11 p.m. And I see the lights glistening as the snow is falling and I'm holding my hot, my, my, my hot chocolate and oh, I feel like a New Yorker. I want to experience fall and see the leaves turn orange and have them crumble to the ground and have them crunch beneath my feet wearing my cute little boots and my skinny jeans with this nice breeze, comfortable weather, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, walking down Central Park, you know, walking with a friend or going off to see a boy or a girl and just having my scarf float behind me and I just feel like a New Yorker. I wanna experience summer where the sun is bright and there's no clouds. And I'm sitting on my rooftop looking a watermelon popsicle. <laughs> Wearing my sunglasses and cute uh, swim shorts, taking Instagram selfies on the rooftop. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <sighs> I feel like a New Yorker. Now, that's assuming I don't have a job, I don't work, and I'm just rich as fuck. <laughs> but even if I had a job, like, not a YouTube job, but like, I stopped being a YouTuber and I just reinvented myself in New York. And sometimes I think about it. I thought about it a lot when I wanted to quit YouTube. I was ready just to, I'm like, I'm getting deported. I, I, I'm done. I was ready to reinvent myself. Mm, so let's pretend I had a job. What would I do? I work at a coffee shop? I would work for a fashion designer. I would be their, um, their assistant, taking notes, running off to do errands for them, counting merchandise to an inventory in the back, wearing these cute, fashionable outfit, working for, as That's So Raven worked for, and her, where'd she, where was she located? I don't even know, San Francisco. Donna Cabana, do you remember Donna Cabana? I wanna work for a Donna Cabana. I wanna work at a fashion studio, be an assistant, you know? Or what other job could I have? I could work at FedEx. I could be delivering packages up and down Fifth Avenue all day long, seeing the busy hustle, seeing the people zigzag and intertwine across the streets. Oh, I love New York. I, and I, all, I think one of the only reasons why New York is the way it is, is because it has a subway. The New York City subway is famous now as I've heard, I haven't been to New York for a long time, but I've been watching, what's her name? The lady from Sex in the City. She's running for a political position in New York. Oh, some, what is she running for? Mayor, governor, something, governor. She wants to fi fix the New York City subway because apparently it's so bad and everyone in the audience cheers. Yes, we hate the New York City subway. So I don't know what's going on with the subway. I've been, I've been reading stuff and watching other, um, I watch The View, I watch, different news stuff. And people say, you know, there's lots of delays, the trains are breaking down. 
it's smelly, the trains are getting old, they just need to have to do a lot of work. And the only, way, the only way you can achieve that is by delegating a lot of money. So not necessarily raising taxes, but taking the taxes that are already coming out and delegating them to this, making that a priority. Not for this, not for that, for the New York City subway, because without that, there is no New York City. Tourism goes down, the economy goes down, people won't visit if they can't get around. Wow, I'm a rhymer, bitch. Um, yeah. See, I've been to Los Angeles, I've been to other big cities, and I don't like them because of the traffic. I hate traffic. If Bangkok didn't have this sky train, I would never come here. I can afford an Uber, I can afford a taxi, but I can't stand taking them because it will take you an hour to get from one end to the other because of the damn traffic. I can take the sky train. It might take me about the same time, maybe even a little more, but the fact that I'm not standing still in traffic, that thought of not moving, really, ooh, I get anxiety. I hate sitting in the car, watching the meter go up. Here, it's no big deal. It's cheap, cheap here. But in New York City, ah, if I had to sit in a car for an hour in New York City because of traffic, that would be a 50, $80 taxi fare, you know? No. Los Angeles is cool. There's a lot of cool people there. There's lots of opportunities. I could see myself living there. If it had a subway, if it had a sky train that was reliable, and it doesn't, and I'll never live there because of it. It doesn't matter how rich I am with a car. It doesn't matter if I can f afford a fucking, what do you call it, a G-Wagon that everyone's obsessed with nowadays. Um, What's the point of having a fancy car if you're sitting in traffic the same way as everyone else, not moving? You're just, you're just like everyone else, miserable in traffic. Uh, Carly told me one time, she's like, I love watching Trisha's car vlogs because they're so long, but it's very interesting because she'll go off to get her nails done and she's in the car for 45 minutes chatting and then she arrives at the nail salon. You're thinking, girl, where the hell do you go to get your nails? Where the hell are you driving 45 minutes to get your nails done? And little lo and behold, do you find out that it's down the street? It is five minutes basically, but because of the traffic, it takes 45 minutes. I would never want to, actually my parents left Washington. I, I, first half of my life, I grew up in the Washington DC area. My parents are both from Washington DC area. I lived right outside in College Park, Maryland until I was 10. And then the second half, half of my life until I turned 20, we, we moved to Pennsylvania. The, the number one reason they left was the traffic. <laughs> you just feel like you're wasting your life away in traffic. Doesn't matter how much money you have if you're still sitting in traffic. You're just as miserable as everyone else. Yeah, you might have air conditioning, maybe some people don't, but other than that, it's the same shit. So anyways, I love New York City. I, I like Boston too, but Boston, I love skyline. I like the skylines. I love to look at skylines. Boston, the skyline's a little bad. Eh, it's not that pretty. Washington DC, uh, now that subway is real bad. I think New York City is more reliable than Washington DC. I've lived in both places. The Metro in Washington DC is the worst. And I feel like Washington DC, it's too political. You know, the clubs close at 11. You know, midnight will roll around and DC's dead. There's nothing open. It's very strange. I don't like that. I mean, I went to college there, so I would come back from the club in a taxi and we're driving back to Catholic University and you're looking out the windows and everything's dark and gloomy and it's only 1130. What the hell? It's a political town. It is not a party town. It is not a, it's just for business. And that's not really for me. I, I, wanna, I want the excitement. So I can't think of a place better than New York in terms of something that's big, something that has a nice skyline, something that has reliable transportation. I mean, there's Toronto. I've never been there. That's kind of similar. But I, I'm American. I, I, America's my home, you know. So I, 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 I want to go to New York. I want to find a room to rent make YouTube videos and get out and go to a club, get out and go to a bar, ride the subway, experience different seasons, which I haven't experienced for so long. I want to be able to wear a coat. Now I did when I got deported at my parents' house. My God, I've been gone forever. That was in February. <laughs> um, it's now July. Wow, it's been a long time. Um, but. 
it's not New York. The only, one of the only reasons I am a little afraid of New York is because it's such a uh, prime target for terrorism. Terrorism. I am very scared of terrorists, as we shall all be. But I always say to myself, like, I don't get checked before I go on that subway. I don't go through any metal detectors. Someone could bring a bomb on that subway and I'm done. Um, terrorism it really, really scares me. The idea of people attacking innocent civilians, commuting to work, going off to the club, walking down the street, getting hit by a car. People are driving the cars on the subway to run people well, people over. That's Now, it's calmed down a lot. That was a big thing this year, wasn't it? That That's really scary. Then it makes me want to move to Montana, live beneath a mountain, and live on my ranch, grow my veggies, raise my chickens, eat my chickens, eat my veggies, and live life in the mountains. But I also like communication. I like seeing people. And I, I think I'm going to move to New York. I might get a one-year contract and go to New York. If, if Los Angeles had a subway system, I would go there. Since they don't, I don't, I don't care if I can taxi and Uber. I hate traffic. And I want to experience snow. I want to experience getting colder and warmer. I, I love New York. And you guys live in New York? And it's interesting, when I look at my YouTube analytics, most of you guys are in California. It's so crazy to me. Um, I look at my YouTube analytics, and 50% of my views that come... Okay, so if you look at my analytics... 70% of my views come from the United States, as you can expect, because I'm American, I speak English, blah, 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 whatever. But 50% of that 70%, so it's like 30%, so here's my whole YouTube graph. 70% is United States. Half of that, so 30-something, comes from California. One state. New York City alone has 8 million people. Los Angeles has two or three. You, the New York is two to three times larger, yet New York is a fraction, is half of half of the California views. I'm like, what? And I remember, I mean, I discovered this a year, years ago, and Orland said, Nick, it's because you have all the rich housewives watching you from, from Beverly Hills that have nothing to do, and they watch you all day eat because they're, they're very sad housewives. <laughs> And I like to think all oh, the housewives are watching me, <laughs> you know, but why is that? You have a greater percentage of more people watching you from an area of the world where there's more people. And I wonder if New York has more immigrants than Los Angeles. I mean, I remember when I was there, there was little Colombia, little Mexico, little Haiti, little Dominican Republic, Chinatown, big areas that were just for immigrants. Of course, the desire to go to America is not as appealing nowadays because the immigrants are belittled a lot, whether you're legal or not. The whole idea of being an immigrant in the United States is no, not what it used to be. But regardless, I think there may be more people in New York that are immigrants, meaning the English may not be as good, meaning that they're working hard. Because to survive in New York, you got to be juggling work. you got to be doing jobs. You're hustling. You don't have time to sit around on YouTube for two hours and watch Nick Akato eat some chicken, talk about pussy, and complain. You don't have time for that. But the rich housewives in New uh, Beverly Hills do, who have no jobs but have enough time and money to afford the internet to watch me. I don't. I, I don't know. That's probably not even accurate. But what the, what other explanation is there? I think there's more people in New York that aren't glued to YouTube, whereas in California, that's where YouTube comes from. There's more. YouTubers and celebrities, social media, maybe bigger. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> I, I want to move to New York. Or maybe I have some friends that are there, Ugh, but I don't, I don't, I don't want to just barge in. See, I don't want to get a whole year's lease, live there for a month and say, oops, I don't really want to be here. I kind of want to give it a try for a month or two. Ah. <sighs> Could you imagine? What if I did vlogs before my mukbangs? Walking down the street, uh, uh, uh. Christmas time, seeing all the lights sparkling behind me. Going to the uh, Madison Square Gardens and going ice skating with a cute girl or a cute boy. Ah, oh, there's just so much I could do. 
I'm gonna move to New York. Anyways, I'm done rambling for today. This food was delicious. I need a fish. These are basically done. Oh, ow. Hmm. <laughs> By the way, I still have noodles left over. I'm gonna eat them later today. Today's my cheat day. Then for the next three days, I'm back on seafood and no carbs. But this is the boost I need to like cure me and I'm, I'm cured. <laughs> and this is so much more sustainable because I'm not gonna get fat from this if the next three days are balance it out. And now that I'm feeling more myself, I'm gonna start going to the gym. There's a pool downstairs. So I'm gonna start going to the pool for a half hour every day, just kind of casually floating around, just moving my body. Not floating, but swimming and um, I got this. I'm really confident that I can lose another 10 to 20 pounds and I'm good. I don't like abs. I don't want abs. Actually, it's so funny. I was, there's this guy I follow on Instagram. It's so funny because he DM'd me and I DM'd him back. And he's so cute. He's watching. And I said, are you Latino? Because I love Latinos. They're my favorite. I, <laughs> I said, are you Latino? He goes, no, I am Middle Eastern mixed with something else, if that's even a thing. I'm like, well, you look so cute. I don't know if I told him. I think I did. In a way. I think I just said I'm like an emoji of like a tongue. <laughs> hey, don't judge. So anyways, why am I talking about him? I don't even know why I'm talking about him. I don't know why I'm talking about him. On Instagram, why am I talking about him? I don't even know. Oh, losing weight, yeah, oh my God. Okay, so his body is perfect for me. He's, uh, I don't like muscular guys, I never have. If you look at Orlin, look at beep, beep, and beep. If you look at other bodies, they all look the same. They don't have muscles. They just are average, average build. I don't, and I don't like too skinny either. Now when I first met Orlin, I, in my opinion, he was too skinny for my taste, but I also was too skinny, so we grew out of it together. Um, but. I don't like bone, bony guys. Like that's that's a thing here in Thailand. Remember when I was crying and I said, it's absolutely a thing here. The skinnier and bony you are, the more attractive you are here. That's public perception. That's in their culture. Um, I'm not turned on by seeing your bones. Um, and I don't like abs. If you have abs, it, if, ew, I don't like seeing abs. Oh. Now I don't necessarily want a beer belly even though Sometimes I'm turned on by that too. I love all types of guys. There are some really skinny guys I like too, but if I had to choose a body type for me, cause it's my personal preference. A lot of people like the bony. A lot of people like the, the twink, the model look. A lot of people love the dad bod. I like that too. So it's just personal preference. And uh, I don't have any prejudice against anyone, no matter what you look like. I'm just saying for me, this guy, Middle Eastern mixed guy, just, you couldn't see his bones, but he was slender but he wasn't a stick figure and he had no muscles. And these nice big nipples. <gasps> oh. <laughs> uh, and like cute little love handles. Cause he has photos of him like of his back. And I don't like seeing a lot of muscle and I don't like seeing bones, but there, I'm not saying that there's rolls coming off. It's just like a little, just a little something. <gasps> <sighs> so that's what I want to look like. I want to look like what I'm attracted to. Which is easy. I don't got. I don't have to go build muscle. I don't want to. <laughs> um, I just gotta um, watch what I eat, move, and be realistic and be patient. I lost a lot of weight really quick, but that's not realistic. I only got it the flu. If you want to lose weight, catch the flu. That's the quickest way you lose weight, I guess. <sighs> want the flu? <coughs> I'll give it to you. Oh, no, I'm joking. Yeah. Now the, the next, now my next chapter is losing another 10 pounds or so, 15, 10 to 15, and then I'm done. That's probably gonna take me three months if I do it strategically, one pound a week, something like that. One pound every two weeks, I'm still okay with. I want to be gap gradual. If it's too much, if it's too fast, it's a shock to the body and I rebound. I'm not having that. So I wanna look like him. I wish I could flash his photo. Like that's just perfect for me. That I like, but also for, for my body. And also I've kind of looked like that 
before. I've in college I had his body. No, I was a little too skinny in college. Anyways, thanks for listening to me ramble. I will see you guys tomorrow. If you're new to my channel, subscribe. Join the sloth fam of my little sloths. Check out my new channel. It's called Noodle King. There's always a link at the top of the description box. A lot of times I link it in the comment section. I'll be like this, or oh my god, or watch this, or my second channel. And I'll just pick out a random video to link there. But a lot of times it's to my other channel because I'm trying to get you guys to go over there. Orlin has calmed down a lot about this channel. He has unblocked me. We have been talking as adults about how divorce papers are gonna work. Um, he's already letting me know Mr. Noodle's in his custody. He's saying he paid for it, I paid for him, but I don't have any way to prove that. It was in cash, we got it in Colombia. He's a Colombian bird. I can't bring him out of Colombia, so there's that. Um, we've been talking like adults, like what we're gonna do. We've gotten through the, what do you wanna say, the hoorah, we've gotten through the worst of it where it's all emotional and you can't understand any words I'm saying. Oh my God. I was on the phone screaming at him like, <laughs> and I sound like a dog. Have you ever heard the dogs that are crying? <laughs> that was me for like two weeks, which is why he blocked me too. So, I just have to be an adult about it, and yeah, and we are. So we're gonna work. We're gonna work all that out. Oh wait, 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 wait! No, the reason I brought him up is because I thought thought he was gonna take this channel down, as he was threatening to do. He, first, he wanted me to delete the videos. Then he was saying, "Well, you know, I still have your password because I'm still logged in on the on the house computer and on his phone because." We share, you know, he know he knows the password to my bank account, which I've changed. He knows the password to my pink, well, I have my card. Like, when you're married to someone, when you anticipate being, the, you, you share, there's no secrets. There were no secrets between us. You know, like I said, he knew I used to, like, get off to pussy porn sometimes. There, there was no secrets. If I had diarrhea, he knew. If I was having a fight with someone on the internet, he knew. If I was disturbed or upset by this and that, he knew. Like, there was no secrets at all, which is good. But anyways, go to my other channel, please. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Bye.